In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a login form and the associated database behind it using ASP.NET for a Windows web server. Hi, welcome to the series on C Sharp and programming web apps. My name is Shad Sluter, and I teach at Grand Canyon University in the Computer Programming and Computer Science area. In this video, we're going to create an application that will have a login form, and then eventually have a database to go behind it. So let's go ahead and step through the process. I'm going to create a new project, and I'm going to choose the c -sharp version of a ASP.NET app. I'm going to call my app the Login App, and I'm going to choose the defaults here. Once again, I'm going to select MVC as I did in previous examples and click Create. All right, it looks like the application is up and running. Let's go examine what we have here. We have the default views, so we should have these three pages that are created for us automatically. We have a controller, and we also have this idea called the route config. So we've examined all of those in previous videos. Now I'm going to go to the controllers folder, and I'm going to right click and make a new controller. So add controller. I'm going to choose the empty controller to start with. Let's name it login controller. And so you should see an action result called index and it returns a view. And instead of returning an action result, let's change it to a string. So I'm going to put in a message that says testing. This is from the index action of the login controller. Let's go into the route config file next, and we're going to add a new custom route. All right, so I'm going to create a second route. It's called, it's called login, and it's going to have the same actions as the default route. Also, we cannot name this uh, route as default, so I'm going to name it as login instead. Let's see what happens when we run it. Okay, it looks like the main page is open. I'm going to put in the word login. And now I have the message that says this is from the index action of the login controller. Next, I want to add a new item to the models. So let's go into the models folder, right click and choose add. I'm going to choose a new item. So what I'm looking for is a class. I want to create a user class. So let's go into the code area and there is class. So I'm going to name this class as user model. So this model will have two properties. We'll call them username and password. Now in C-sharp, you can type in the word prop and then press tab tab, and you will get yourself a uh, default property. So changing from string and username and password as the names. Now I would like to use this model when I log in. So let's go to the login controller. So now I want to add a view to this controller. There's a nice shortcut. If you click somewhere in the center of the code, you'll get an option that says add view. So when we create this view, we can actually add the model to it and it'll automatically write a lot of code. So the view name I'm going to choose as login. So instead of empty without a model as my template, I'm going to choose the word create and then it's going to ask me for my class. So do I have any classes that I could pick from? I have user model. So let's choose that. Now go ahead and choose add and it will create the model and the view automatically for us. So look at all this code login. It's creating a form, it looks like. Lots of code already filled in and it's all associated with this thing called the user model. Okay, so now we want to show this when we uh, go to the login URL. So let's go back into the login controller and make a modification. So the data type that I'm going to choose is now called action result. And so now in instead of returning a string, let's change this to say we're going to return a view, and the view name is login. So let's see what that does. Okay, the application's up and running. Let's see what happens when I put in the view URL with login. And so there's the form that came up. And you can see that the username and password are now fields because they were associated with the model that we just created. So all this code is automatically generated. All right, the next step in the process is to be able to actually submit the form and see if we can valid, validate a user as a login. So first of all, let's go to the controller and add a new action. 
Okay, so the simple action that I'm going to use is to return a string, just to keep it simple. And then I'm going to have a login action. So it'll be, the URL will be login slash login. So I want to now e expect that there will be a, a user uh, object that will be passed to the login. And so I'm going to use the data type user login or user model. So it says you can't use that. We have to do something, probably import. Let's go see what the options are for importing. So I'll use login models. And at the top of the page, we do have login app models chosen. So now in this string that we return, I can add some data. I'm going to say the username equals, and then we'll use the uh, actual parameter name user model. Notice it's an underscore, or under, a lowercase u, and then we'll dot username on it, and then we'll do the same with the password. So now this is expecting an action to come from somewhere. However, we haven't set up the action that will bring us to this URL. Let's do that next. So I'm going to go into the form called login and the HTML page. Now let's examine the code here. In a form on the web, you're expecting that there's an action associated with a form usually. And you can see at the beginning we have this uh, razor uh, syntax called using HTML begin form. So when this generates the HTML code, it will say the word form, and then inside there will be an action equals, and then we can put in the actual URL where this form will go. So just to keep this guy around, I'm gonna make some comments. So to comment things out in a block, you can use the uh, at symbol and star, and then the star um, at symbol. So that's a code block that's uh, commented. Okay, now I want something similar, so I'm going to copy and paste the code that we just commented out. So I have to put in some parameters here. The first parameter is going to be the action. So the word login is the action. The second parameter is the name of the controller, which also happens to be login. So login and then the login action of that controller. Now, is this going to be a get or a post form? Well, I'm going to select here something called form method and see what the options are. And sure enough, we have get and post. So I'm gonna make this thing into a post. So when this form is generated in HTML, it will look like the standard form that you've hopefully programmed in other circumstances with HTML. So that should be enough code to make the action respond. Let's see if it works. So you can see that my page automatically opened up to login slash login. I'm going to delete this one and just have a single login. So this should go to the default action, which is my username and password form. Who do you want to log in? How about Jack and his password is Jill. It looks like we need to make this into a password format and instead of the word create, probably change the text to login. But anyway, let's click the button and now you can see the results are. The username is Jack and the password is Jill. So you have created a form that will accept input. Let's inspect our page and see what came out of our code. So if I choose my Chrome browser here I'm using now and I'm inspecting, if I choose one of these items, you can see what has been generated. Specifically, look at this line here called form action. We never saw that in our code, but you can see where the results came from. So the action is login slash login. So the parameters that we did in the code says I want an action and a controller name and then the method was post. And so what you see here is the final generated version of the HTML. Let's close this. Let's come back into the uh, code on our view. So the line that we updated was here. We said we're gonna use the parameters login login and the method equals form post. That we should probably change this to a password uh, field instead of just a plain text. And so you can see that by default it created this thing editor for, and then it has model arrow model password. So it is binding the control of the, on the web page to a property on the model, on the, on the person. So instead of editor for, there's probably something else. Let's see if we delete that and see what the choices are. Is there a password? Look at there, there's a password for. So my guess is that when we choose password for, we're gonna get a password encoded item. Is there a button on here? It says uh, the value is create, and let's try change that to login. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a, uh, a little bit more customized. 
So now I have the button, the text has changed, and if I type in somebody here and I put in some text, you can see that it is now a formatted for uh, passwords. So a big part of learning how to program websites in .NET and C Sharp is to uh, know the Razor syntax. And so I have on the screen here the Microsoft documentation, and it says here we're in the uh, Razor syntax section. So rendering HTML and you can see that there's a lot of code here. So it tells you how to work through different control, control structures such as for loops and if statements, how to reference different controls in a form, and so there's a lot of reference here. Obviously I'm not going to go through every one of these in this video, but if you are interested in creating your own custom form, you're probably going to end up looking up a lot of information. So here's where you'll find it, the official Microsoft website, in the next video, we're going to create a validation to see if this username and password is correct. And then following that, we'll add a database where it'll look up the username and password of our known users. So that's what's to come.